Oh, well, hello there. My name is Hermione Jean Granger, and I'm coming to you on behalf of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and the Ministry of Magic. There is so much for us to do and learn together. I can't wait to bring you into the wizarding world. Perhaps you've already thought about attending Hogwarts School. Perhaps you're of age and perhaps you're waiting for an invitation. When I was your age, I had no idea that I had magical abilities. I didn't know that I was about to embark on an incredible adventure and meet all kinds of new people and learn so many new things. I loved my years at Hogwarts School. And one of the reasons is because I love to learn. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. One of the reasons that the Mid-Hudson Library system is so special to me is because they love to learn too. And they love to help you learn, in fact. You should go check out your library this summer because they have some amazing surprises in store for you this summer, including this right now. We're going to have a charms class so that you can learn some first year charms and perhaps we'll dabble in some second and third year charms, perhaps even some fourth year charms. And you're going to learn so much about the wizarding world and perhaps you might learn that you have magical abilities as well. Now, we're going to do all of this through reading. Reading is one of my favorite things to do. And today, for a bit of light reading, I am going to share with you a story called Winnie the Witch. Now, I want you to look at this book because there is, there are some similarities between Winnie and myself. I'm a witch and Winnie is a witch but we may be different kinds of witches in some ways. You'll find that whenever you meet someone new, you have things that are the same and things that are different. That's one of the wonderful things about meeting new people. The different things are fascinating and you get to learn something new and perhaps find something you've never seen before in your whole entire life. A new friend is like an adventure. That's why I'm so excited that you are here with me. And I'm sure we have some things in common as well, like Winnie and I do have some things in common. So what we are going to do is open up this book and see what we have in common and see what might be different. First of all, I'm going to show you the house that Winnie lives in. Winnie the witch lived in a black house in the forest. There are so many details in this house. I'm going to give you just a moment to look at her house. It's just amazing, but it's all the same color. Didn't you see that? There are some incredible things about Hogwarts where I lived for years while I was there at school. We have staircases that move. Do you have stairs at your house? Do they move back and forth? <laughs> just stay in the same place and that's what stairs usually do. I grew up in the muggle world myself just like you and we didn't have stairs that moved. Oh and the pictures on the walls they move too. Sometimes they even talk to you. Do you have pictures on your walls? Do they ever talk to you and move? <laughs> I think it's absolutely fascinating the incredible things that they did at Hogwarts. Now, Winnie the Witch lived in a black house in the forest. Her house was black on the outside and black on the inside. The carpets were black. The chairs were black. Can you find a black chair in Winnie's house? Where could it be? Well done. And the bed was black and it had black sheets and black blankets. Do you have your very own bed? And what color is it? That sounds so lovely. Let's see if you can find Winnie's black bed with her black pillows and black sheets and black blankets. She is way up at the top of the house, isn't she? Even the bathtub was black. Now let's see where that bathtub is. I found the bathtub. Let's see if you can find it as well. That black bathtub. I hope it's not black like dirty. That wouldn't be a very effective bathtub, would it? 
Now we're going to get into one of the things that Winnie and I have in common. Winnie lived in her black house with her cat, Wilbur. He was black too, and this is how the trouble began. Wilbur is sitting on her legs. You can see him, can't you? What color are Wilbur's eyes? Let's make sure you're looking at him. Mm -hmm. Wilbur and his green eyes. Now the thing we have in common, Winnie and I, is that we each have a cat. Do you know the name of my cat? Crookshanks is a dear friend of mine, as pets often become. When a student is about to attend Hogwarts, quite often, they will get a pet to bring with them. Sometimes it will be a frog, sometimes it will be an owl, sometimes it might be a cat, or occasionally it might even be a rat. Who do I know that brought a rat with him to Hogwarts? Ron's rat Scabbers turned out to be quite an adventure. We didn't realize what Scabbers was, but he was an animagus that was stuck as a rat, a man stuck as a rat for quite some time. Do you have an idea of if you did go to Hogwarts, what kind of an animal would you bring? You can either share it in the comments and put your name as well, or you can just say it out loud. My sweet Crookshanks was one of my best companions. I loved having her there with me. Now, Winnie has Wilbur, and the problem is that when Wilbur sat on a chair with his eyes open, Winnie could see him. Well, she could see his eyes anyway. You can see what she's talking about, right? There are his eyes, bright and green, but the rest of him is camouflaged in that black house. But when Wilbur closed his eyes and went to sleep, Winnie couldn't see him at all. So do you know what happened? What if there's a cat sitting on a chair and you can't see the cat because it's exactly the same color as the chair and you decide to use the chair? What happens next? She sat on him. That's quite predictable, isn't it? Well, let's see what happens next. When Wilbur sat on the carpet with his eyes open, when he could see him, well, she could see his eyes anyway. There he is on the carpet. I can see his eyes. How about you? I wouldn't step on him because his eyes are there. But when Wilbur closed his eyes and went to sleep, Winnie couldn't see him at all. So you know what comes next. She tripped over him. And there she is. This is a problem, isn't it? Now, at Hogwarts, one of the ways we learn to fix problems is with magic. But you still de do need to use your intelligence because you need to know which spell will work to fix your problem. Now is the time for us to learn our first spell in our charms class. What you're going to need for this, well, what would be ideal for this is if you had a wand. Now, if you don't have a wand, that's quite all right. If you haven't been to Diagon Alley and had a wand choose you, you can use anything that is long and skinny like a wand would be. You can use a straw, you could even use a pencil, or perhaps a stick from outside, or you could even use something that's colorful like a marker, crayon, or a colored pencil. Perhaps you have a spoon nearby, you can use that as well. Perhaps you have a piece of paper and you want to roll it up in a tight little tube, and you can use that. Or something I'm quite certain you have at least one of with you right now is your finger. So even if you don't have a wand, you have so many options. Accomplished witches and wizards can even perform magic without the use of a wand at all. A wand serves to focus you. When you focus, you only think about one thing and you make sure that it's done just right. You know how when someone's teaching you something or when you have a chore to do or a project you're working on, perhaps you're drawing something and you only think about that one thing until it's finished and you do it just right. That is focus. And a wand can help a wizard or witch focus. This is my wand. This is a wand made of vine wood and it is a 10 and 3 quarter inch wand. That's how long it is and it has a dragon heartstring core. I am going to use this one to teach you one of the most basic spells. This is the first spell that I learned at Hogwarts. Of course, I studied 
well before I attended Hogwarts and learned plenty of spells the summer before I began there. However, the first spell I learned in my charms class with Professor Flitwick was Wingardium Leviosa. This is a fun one because you can levitate things with it. That means you can make things move. Now, if Winnie used this spell, what do you think she might move in this case? Perhaps Wilbur. The problem is though, that she couldn't see him. I wonder if you could put a levitating charm by using Wingardium Leviosa and making it stay even when you go off and do something else. So then whenever he's taking a nap, Wilbur could be floating in the air and then she'd never trip over him. I think that would have been a good solution. However, the Wingardium Leviosa charm we're going to work on today only works when you're using your wand with it. So pick up your wand or choose a finger and we're going to learn two parts to this. The first part is the movement. That's what you do with your wand or your finger. The second part is going to be the incantation. The incantation is the words you say at the same time as moving your wand and together they produce the charm. So first, I want you to take your wand and place it over to the side like this, pointing in that direction. Now you're going to make an upside down rainbow or the letter U with your wand like this. Well done, let's do it again. An upside down rainbow or the letter U. Perfect. Now let's do it one more time. There we go and I'll stop here and draw a line straight down. Perfect. Now I want you to imagine the thing that you'd like to levitate if you could. Now, chances are this charm will not actually produce levitation for you because underage wizards and witches are strictly forbidden from performing magic outside the walls of Hogwarts. So what you're practicing right now is the movement and the words so that when you are inside the walls of Hogwarts, you'll be all ready to practice. Here we go. Movement one, movement two, straight down. Remember, rainbow straight down rainbows straight down. All right, now the words. We're going to say this together. Wingardium Leviosa. Not Leviosa. Leviosa. There we go. Let's do it together. Just the words now. Wingardium Leviosa. Well done. Do you think you're ready to put it together with the movement? I think you're ready. All right. Wands up, Wingardium Leviosa. It's a swish and flick. I am quite impressed. Let's do it again. And this time, after you do the swish and the flick, I want you to bob your wand up and down because that is how you keep your object floating in the air. Here we go, on the count of three. One, two, three, Wingardium Leviosa. I am quite impressed. Perhaps we'll pull our wands out again and learn a different spell as we go on. Well, it's time to see what's happening with Winnie and Wilbur. One day after a nasty fall, Winnie decided something had to be done. This is another thing that Winnie and I have in common. When we see a problem, we fix it. Is that something that you do as well? Problems, I think, are fun to fix. Well, it's fun when they are fixed and I love a good challenge. Once, Harry and Ron and I were going off to find Horcruxes and I didn't know when we need to leave. I thought perhaps we need to leave in the blink of an eye to go searching for them and I was right. Luckily, I had thought ahead and I prepared. I had a satchel with an undetectable extension charm that I put on it. That meant I could fill that satchel with anything and everything I wanted. I had a tent in there, of course about 15 books at least. And I also had five changes of clothes for each of the three of us and countless other things. It was wonderful to have that. 
I love being prepared for anything. And I think you can do the same thing. Think ahead about what you might need and then take care of your future self by doing it. Perhaps tonight you can think ahead about what clothes you'd want to wear in the morning and then set them out for yourself. That way you can get up and get right on with having fun with the day. Well, Winnie decided that she had a problem and she needed to fix it. This is what made her realize she had a problem. Can you find Wilbur? Right there on the stairs and how would you like to go zooming down, down, down the stairs like Winnie? She does not look very comfortable at the bottom there, does she? Well, Winnie picked up her magic wand, waved it once. Now this is your chance to come up with your own spell. The word she's going to use is abracadabra. You can use the word abracadabra, but I want you to decide what your wand movement is. You can do anything you like. You can move your wand in a circle. You can draw something. You could even draw a heart with it. You could push it straight forward, straight down. You can do whatever you like. You can write your name in the air with it. Are you ready? Do you know what you want to do? All right, all together now, I want you to say abracadabra and do your wand movement on three. One, two, three. Abracadabra! And that was my wand movement. Now let's see what her spell does. Wilbur was a black cat no longer. He was bright green. What do you think? Oh my goodness. Haley. Do you like him better as a green cat or as a black cat? Let's see what Wilbur likes better and let's see what Winnie likes better. When Wilbur slept on a chair now, Winnie could see him. It looks like it's working. When Wilbur slept on the floor, Winnie could see him. And she could see him when he slept on the bed. But Wilbur was not allowed to sleep on a bed. <laughs> Do, would you let a cat sleep on your white bed, Haley? <laughs> Sometimes I let Crookshank sleep on my bed. She does shed a lot though, quite a lot. And then my bed is full of cat hairs. So, Winnie put him outside. Outside, in the grass. Hmm. Now, Haley, you like him green better. Let's see if it actually works better. Winnie came, oh, when, Win when Wilbur sat outside in the grass, Winnie couldn't see him, even when his eyes were open. <gasps> Look at that, I'll bet you know where he is. But Winnie can't even see him. He's even more camouflaged than he was in the black house. Winnie came hurrying outside. She tripped over Wilbur, turned three somersaults and fell into a rose bush. This time, Winnie was furious. She picked up her magic wand, waved it five times, and let's wave our wands together five times, however you'd like. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Are you ready to turn the page? Let's see what happens. She waved it five times. She's so furious. And Abra Kadabra. Wilbur had a red head, a yellow body. What color is his tail? A pink tail, blue whiskers, and how many purple legs does Wilbur have? One, two, three, four. Now, Winnie could see Wilbur when he sat on a chair, when he lay on the carpet, and when he crawled in the grass, and even when he climbed up to the tallest tree. There he is. You can see him in the tree as well, can't you? Wilbur climbed to the top of the tallest tree to hide. He looked ridiculous and he knew it. Even the birds laughed at him. Wilbur was miserable. He stayed at the top of the tree all day and all night. 
Next morning, Wilbur was still up in the tree. Winnie was worried. She loved Wilbur and she hated him to be miserable. It's no fun when a friend is unhappy. I'm glad that I had friends that were there for me even when I felt unhappy. We went on so many adventures together, trying to help everyone in the wizarding community be happy. One of the types of creatures that I love to help more than anyone else is house elves. Have you ever heard of house elves before? House elves have been mistreated for centuries. House elves don't even know what it's like to be free. They don't know that they want to be free. And those house elves actually need help, even though they don't realize it. You can set a house elf free by, well, I think you probably have the perfect thing. Do you have any socks that don't have matches? I always have a pile of socks in my closet that I'm just hoping one day I'll find the match, but I know I probably won't. If you have a sock that doesn't have a match and you'd be willing, and your grown-ups are all right with it, you'd be willing to give one of those socks to a house elf, you can set them free. Have your grown-up help you put it outside your bedroom door and perhaps if it's gone in the morning after you wake up, you will know that you've set a house elf free. If you would like to join me in taking care of adorable, sweet house elves who need our help, I would like to invite you to join the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare. This is a club that is dedicated to stopping the outrageous abuse of our fellow magical creatures, and we are also dedicated to campaigning for a change in their legal status. As you can see, I have many members of my club already. Harry and Ron are members of the club, and if they've told you that it's pronounced spew, don't listen to them. They're really not accurate. It's the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare. If you would like to join my club, just let me know. Tell me in the comments, with the correct spelling of your name, of course, and I will use my quill to write your name on this paper. And Haley, if you're going to try setting a house elf free, you may want to consider joining my society. I'd love to have you. And whenever you see someone else who needs help, whether they're house elf or not, it is definitely in the spirit of the Society of the Promotion of Elfish Welfare to help whenever you can. Now, speaking of help, there are other spells we can use to help those in need. Sometimes you may find yourself in a battle against a dark wizard. I hope not, but if you ever do, you can use this spell to help you. It's one of our favorites and we use it to disarm our opponents. It's called Expelliarmus. Now, while you think about that word Expelliarmus, because you're going to need to say it out loud, I am going to add your names to this list. We've got Julie on the list. Thank you so much for joining our society. I'm going to put your name, Julie, right here. J-U-L-I-E. And Haley as well. You want me to sign you up? I'm happy to have you. All right, let's see. We've got H-A. Let's see how you spell your name. H-A-Y-L-E-Y, -E correct? H-A-Y-L-E-Y. -E now, if you'd like, at this point, you can say your name out loud and I will set my quill over here and my quill will write it for me as we finish our story and our charms class. Welcome to the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, we're going to learn Expelliarmus. This like I said, will disarm an opponent. That means it will knock something out of their hand, typically a wand. So I want you to say the word Expelliarmus with me. Ready, set, go. Expelliarmus. Well done. Now for the movement. Take your wand or your finger, whatever you're using as a wand today, 
put it in front of you and I want you to draw a straight line to the side. Yes, and then a line straight down, similar to the end of Wingardium Leviosa. Straight across and straight down. Yes, like drawing half of a box. Ready? Let's do it again. Yes, now let's do it together. We're going to say Expelliarmus while we do the movement. I think you're ready. Don't doubt yourself, you've got this. Here we go, one, two, three, Expelliarmus. Yes, let's see if we can do it twice in a row. Let's do it pointing this way and then pointing this way because occasionally you'll have multiple wizards that need to be disarmed coming at you from both directions. Right, on the count of three, one, two, three. Expelliarmus, Expelliarmus. Impressive. Let's see what Winnie does to help Wilbur. Winnie had an idea. She waved her magic wand and, can you remember what her incantation is? Abra, what is it? Abracadabra, let's wave our wands however you like, and say abracadabra. Ready? One, two, three. Abracadabra! And Wilbur was a black cat once more. He came down from the tree, purring. Then when he waved her wand again and again and again. Can you look at the clues in this picture and guess what Winnie might be doing? Let's see if you're right. Now, instead of a black house, she had a yellow house with a red roof and a red door. Can you find the red door? Oh, she has more than one red door. Hmm? The chairs were white with red and white cushions. The carpet was green with pink roses. The bed was blue with pink and white sheets and pink blankets. The bath was gleaming white. And now Winnie can see Wilbur no matter where he sits. Instead of changing Wilbur, she changed the house. I think that's beautiful. At the beginning of our story time, we talked about how new friends, you'll find that you have something in common and something that's different. We don't want to change each other, do we? I love knowing that you are different from me in some ways and that we're the same in other ways. You're perfect exactly as you are. I don't want you to change a bit. And I'm glad that Winnie realized that Wilbur didn't need to change a bit. I'm grateful for each one of my friends. Harry, Ron and I were a fantastic team because we all brought something different to the table. We were all Gryffindors, of course, and as such, we were all brave, but we each helped the cause in a different way. And I don't think we would have been able to defeat you know who if we were alone. Now, we talked about too, how Winnie and I have some things in common and some things different. Of course, we both have a cat, that's the same. We both use a wand and can perform magic, and that's the same. But some things are different. I never wear a hat like that. Professor McConaughey wears a hat somewhat like that. However, her hat is black, just like Winnie's house used to be. And Winnie's hat is much more colorful to match how her house is now. You, there is something about you that is unique and different that no one else can be. You're the only chance that I had to have the great adventure of being your friend. And I am honored to have taught you some first year charms. Before we leave, would you like to learn one more? Haley, your guess that she was going to color her castle was such a good one. And it really makes sense, doesn't it? What a good solution. Let's take our wands and I'm going to teach you one that I had to use on my own mom and dad. This is a charm that takes away someone's memory. I had to do that to keep my parents safe when they were being chased by some dark wizards. It worked 
and luckily I was able to reverse it later on. So now they remember me and all is well. But this is a powerful charm. Don't feel bad if you can't produce it right now because it's not easy. But I think you're ready for it. Are you up for the challenge? All right, place your wand in front of you and I want you to place your finger along the wand like this. Here we go. It's just helpful as we perform this charm. I want you to turn the wand this direction to the outside. That means your thumb is going to be turning upwards. Mm -hmm. And this pointer finger is going to be turning away from your body, turning your hand clockwise. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, slowly, I want you to say the word obliviate. Can you practice that word with me? Obliviate. Now let's do it together. Obliviate. You turn your hand slowly. Yes. Very good. Now let's practice each one of our charms one at a time and then it will be time to conclude our charms class for today. First let's start with the very first one we learned. Do you remember what it was? The levitation charm? Let's do Wingardium Liviosa first. It's a swish and flick. Ready? One, two, three. Wingardium Leviosa. And then we learned Expelliarmus, which will knock an opponent's wand out of their hand. Ready? It's across and down. One, two, three. Expelliarmus. Yes! Now the last one, which should be fresh in your mind, is Obliviate. On the count of three, one, two, three. Obliviate. Thank you again for being my friend, for learning about the magical community. I'm so grateful to be friends with you. Until next time. <laughs>